Man, I just can't take it anymore. First, my drawing software took longer than it usually does to open. Then my laptop disconnects itself from the internet. My very busy friend has detected me back in two days. My job is exhausting and leaves me with no energy. No one watches my content. And there's one minuscule muscle in my right eye that just will not stop twitching. Like, seriously, what the fuck? I just cannot stop. Ah! Anyway, why am I so mad all of a sudden? Alright, it's because today we're talking about the angriest class ever made in Dungeons & Dragons, the Barbarian. So grab your heaviest weapon and prepare to state your bullshit opinion on Twitter, Reddit, or whatever the fuck you people use these days. This is a very unhelpful guide to subclasses. <laughs> Every subclass is based around the Barbarian's key feature, your bloodthirsty rage, and is going to augment it in some way. Now, the Barbarian has eight official subclasses that are just different flavors of mad. But, JT, what does this rage function do? Oh, fuck if I know. What, did you think I was seriously going to talk about the class like someone is just copying Joket? Why do you think I've linked the Crap Guide series and Joket's channel in all two of these videos? Anyway, your varieties of furiousness include, but are not limited to, being mad at your parents because your childhood sucks, being mad because your armor can't stab someone, being mad because you're a furry and no one respects you, being mad because why the fuck not, being mad at nature for ruining your perfect summer day, being mad at humanity because nature rules, being mad at magic because you're not supposed to be this good at it, and being mad at the heretics who say anger has no place in their stupid religion. God was super pissed at everyone but no one, that's why she caused the flood, why does no one understand that? <laughs> If you're an ancestral guardian, your parents or parents' parents are probably dead, and this pisses you off big time, mainly because for some reason they don't stay dead due to you being angry all the time. It's like the Grim Reaper wants to make your life miserable or something. The most maddening thing about this, though, is that the ghosts of your ancestors don't actually do shit to your enemies. Instead, they just stand there looking cooler than you do, stopping attacks from hitting you and yelling, don't talk to me or my son ever again at the top of their lungs, and... Wait, why were we mad at them again? That actually sounds kind of helpful. Sorry, what was that? You did what? I thought I made it clear to not touch my room. You always do this every time. <laughs> Ever wanted to be an angry porcupine that hurts enemies whenever they try to attack you like a retaliatory insult about how you did their mom the other night? Well, too bad, because for some weird reason, only dwarves can be battle ragers, and I took that personally as an insult to those of us who are tall. And while you are literally just a spiked cannonball running through hordes of enemies like you're racing to the video store because they're going to take all eight seasons of Game of Thrones off the shelves, and that can make for some interesting battle tactics utilizing your strategic abilities, I would just like to point out that battle ragers are also called Kuljag in Dwarvish, which literally translates to Axe Idiot. Okay, first my height, now my intelligence. How fucking dare you! <laughs> Remember what I said about how no one respects furries? Well, they better respect you because you can actually pack a punch. Or a bite. Or claw. Yeah, that's right, you actually get animalistic abilities, and you're so bad about not being respected that you make other people mad just by being around them, forcing them to bottle it up inside like so many of us do, or take it out on their totally undeserving, respectful friend who has no judgments about your life choices. Thanks, friend. But there's a plus about having the non-judgmental friends, because at higher levels, you can make your friends just as angry as you are, that no one respects your entire friend group just because the one guy is a furry, and they really need to know each individual member of the group before you make your stupid judgments. Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna say something that you're not gonna like. If you picked Bath of the Berserker, you were a basic bitch. Yeah, I said it. You mad? You angry? You pissed off yet? You super fucking mad right now, bitch? Good! The whole point of being a berserker is the fact that you don't give a shit about your own well-being. All you care about is painting any applicable surface red with the blood of your enemies while listening to the heaviest metal possible and laughing like a goddamn maniac the entire time because you are getting charged with both versions of the long word that has a meaning which you don't know because intelligence is for weak losers and eggheads, of which you are neither! <laughs> a wise man once said, Mother Nature is a bitch, and I agree with that statement. Shut up, I'm trying to record something. In fact, you especially are so mad at nature that you make it as mad as you are, unleashing the full force of every natural disaster in existence, by which I mean three, because as I said before, Mother Nature is a bitch. Your three options are the desert, because sand is rough, coarse, and gets everywhere, the sea if you want Poseidon to quiver before you, or the tundra if you want to reenact day after tomorrow and freeze over an entire city all because of the fucking <laughs> As a totem warrior, you're mad because you aren't able to actually be an awesome animal and reject humanity. No, you cannot become monkey. Shut up. The only animals you are allowed to be mad at are Yogi Bear, America, the dumb ones that run into traffic, the weirdly attractive bad dancers from Zootopia, or the only cool option, the only one you're actually mad that you're not one because wolves are fucking dope. Anyone who says otherwise is wrong and I hate them and they have no right to live on this planet and... Wait, this sounds like a Twitter post. Ah! <laughs> 
As every D&D noob would agree, magic is complicated and hard to use. So to paraphrase the comedic genius of Brian David Gilbert, why'd you give it to a martial class? We were perfectly fine with the base barbarian. We didn't need you to add any special abilities that ultimately aren't special and make very little sense, like Fortnite adding skills to popular characters. Why are they in Fortnite? That game sucks. Of course, as soon as I decided to look at what effects there are, I realized that some of the features are actually cool, like sucking the life out of people, teleporting every six seconds, or just being a fucking disco ball, because why not? Wait, we didn't need that added in. What'd you do to our base barbarian? Watch your own <laughs> And out of my favorite variety of anger, the one that essentially makes you Doom Guy. Path of the Zealot means you fight until you die, which is foreseeably never because the gods decide that you're their favorite person, like never failing an exam in high school because you're secretly your teacher's side piece. Once you retire levels, not only will you be smiting things like a boss, inspiring others to take up arms in the name of the sword and shield, but you will be literally, yes, literally, too angry to die. At zero hit points, you're still fighting. Filled all your death saves, you're still fighting. Supposed to be dead right now, you're still fucking fighting because you are anime protagonist levels of badass and you cannot be stopped! Ah! Anyway, infinite anger aside, now you know everything there is to know about all the officially published barbarian subclasses. Good night.